Hi well, everyone. I'm just waiting for a moment to see if my screen is working. It should do. I can't see my video yet. Well, I'll just wait for a second to make sure everything works. I'm a little bit early. We start in a minute or so. There we go. Just quickly making sure. Ah, I can see my screen now. Wonderful. Um, let me also share my Pinterest. So. In the chat. And then we'll get started. Welcome everyone. We are sketch in color today. are from Pinterest and this is the link there we go so, wonderful I can see there's someone here already welcome thank you so much for joining in we're a little bit early and it's three o'clock now so let's get started See a few more people joining in. Wonderful. So if I'm assuming that you've been here before, I know there's a lot of reoccurring people watching these sessions, but if you're new, my name is Irene. I am an artist, an illustrator. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands originally and I live in the UK. And I am um, every week I host a sketchbook session. So some weeks we sketch in pen, sometimes we're painting, sometimes we do other things. And today I'm going to use my small sketchbook and I'm going to use my acrylic paint markers. And I've done this technique for a few sessions now, so I, I really enjoyed it and I decided to keep going with the same style for a little while um, before I change it up, so that's what I'm doing. And the idea of these sessions is that we draw together and we find some time sort of to be creative together, but we don't all have to work on the same project. So this is a little bit less of an art class. I host lots of art classes as well, where I you know, provide a sketch template and we go through the drawing step by step and I explain exactly what it is that I'm doing sort of in a much more in-depth detail. This is a bit more free. I um, I just work in my sketchbook and people who join in also work in their sketchbooks. And sometimes people work on different projects as well and they just like to have the video in the background to um, yeah, to just feel like we're working together on uh, whatever creative activity it is that we're doing. Which is something that I really enjoy and um, yeah, I answer questions as well. So if anyone has any questions at any point about art materials or illustration or all these sort of things, uh, ask away and I'm very happy to uh, help where I can. I'm going to use this little sketchbook again today. I've used it for a few sessions now. Um, I bought it on Amazon. I have a whole sort of selection of these, these little sketchbooks. Um, they are very cheap. I think it's only a few pounds for a set of five. And as you can see, it's quite thin paper. And these, like some of these I've done in these live sessions and some of these are um, from sort of drawings that I've made in my own time. This is one I did this morning. This one I did last night on the couch. I was just like adding some doodles to the paper. So I really try and keep it quite low. Oh, so make this a little bit lower. There we go. I quite like to keep it quite um, like not too complicated these sessions because we sketch for half an hour, maybe an hour at the most, and uh, I want to keep it quite loose and free and uh, not too not too complicated. So something that is just enjoyable and fun to do together. I 
um, work from some reference pictures. Just so I have a bit of inspiration in front of me. Uh, but I use my pictures really loose and not to, um, yeah, I don't hold on to the pictures too tight and sort of use them for inspiration. So I really like this picture with the little colibris or the hummingbirds as they're called in, uh, in English. And um, this tropical flower, I was looking for some tropical flowers. I felt like these colors would work quite well on these markers. And I just tried a slightly different marker here. You can see, we can see that color through a little bit more, but I like using acrylic paint markers in these books because the, uh, the colors don't press through my paper so much. Just quickly checking if everything is working. Everyone can hear me okay. Sometimes the sound doesn't work or something like that. We've had some problems in the past. I think everything should be working. And let's get started then. Let's start doing some art. So let me know if you're drawing along with me or if you're working on your own project. I'm curious to hear. I know there's always quite a lot of people who um, work on side projects whilst they watch this. So, and I will save this photo to my Pinterest board. So if you want to find a specific photo, you can find it on Pinterest as well. I, I think I'm going to have my paper like this because it sort of makes sense for this little pattern. It is um, the Bologna Children's Book Fair this week. If, uh, if you're an illustrator, you probably have heard about it. Uh, I went a few years ago. It is really enjoyable. I absolutely loved it. But this year I decided to um, give it a miss just because the yeah, I had a lot of other projects on the go that I wanted to uh, focus on instead. But yeah, I do have a bit of like FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, yeah, because it's a really wonderful event and I can see all these pictures from everyone sharing their uh, their experiences there. So maybe a bit of light green. I don't know if these two colors are very different. Try get a bit of a light color in as well. I like this. So I'm just seeing if I can find some tropical green colors. I think maybe this works a bit better. And maybe three colors is enough for now. I need a background color as well, something contrasting. Should I use purple today? No, I don't like that. Something a little bit different. Maybe this bright yellow. I'm just going through my colors. I like to make a bit of a color scheme before I get started. So I know what colors I'm going to use before I start using them. Should we do that? Sometimes the colors are a bit brighter in reality than they are on, um, on the lid of the uh, markers I'm using. I quite like this color scheme. I think I'm going to stick with that. So a little bit tropical for this one. And the, um, yeah, I like to pick out my colors beforehand so I know roughly what it is that I'm going to do before I, uh, I start. And I'm just going to sketch this out. I like, I think I'm going to just focus on the flower for now and then do the hummingbirds on the next page. So I'm going to change it up a little bit. And there we go. Yeah, as I said, yeah, it's Bologna Children's Book Fair at the moment, which is a really great resource for anyone who wants to make or you know illustrate a children's book, anyone who wants to write a children's book. It is a fantastic resource for that. If you're if this is something that you're thinking about, I would really recommend it because you can see so many examples of different books that have diff different that different publishers from all over the world. Um, are publishing this year and they're selling rights to other publishers and it's just absolutely wonderful to see all these different styles and topics and things that are being created and um yeah i'm sure i'll go again maybe next year or at another point so i'm just starting on these sketches And what else is going on? My mom is visiting here at the moment. She's staying for a little while. She was here last week as well. So she's staying for a while and well, when I say for a while, she's staying for a few weeks. 
And she's really lovely. We spend a lot of time together. But I do notice that I'm a bit distracted from work <laughs> for that reason, because uh, I like to hang out with mom and not, uh, not do too much work. So I'm noticing that as well. And I also don't want to feel guilty about not working. I, uh, I think it's fine to want to spend time with a guest. So that's what I'm trying to do and not feel guilty about it. So actually, there we go. So I'm going to add the green over this. I hope it works. I hope that that green is going to be opaque enough to go over the uh, this orange color. So, so I'm going to do the same here. I feel like I can do this a little bit quicker now because this is the second one. So. And what else is going on? I am joining this program called Small and Mighty, which is um, organized by Small Business Britain, which is, uh, I think it's government funded or government organized. Um, but yeah, I should get a mentor through that and I'm doing a business course for that. So hopefully I will learn some skills to implement in my business. And if any of you are running a small business, I'd recommend you check out their website. It's not just for creative businesses, it's for all small business and you have to write a little application form if you want to join in uh, but i thought it was quite easy not uh, not too many difficult questions and um they seem to have a lot of resources there for small businesses so that's a, a place that i'm going to check out a bit more often going forward for um for information and courses and things like that because sometimes we're just trying to do everything ourselves right but there is quite a lot of information out there if you know where to find it. Hi, really lovely to see you. It's always nice to see you here. There we go. I just started with this sketch. I put a link to these markers in the... See, this works really well actually, it's quite opaque. I put a link to these markers in my um, description. So if you um, want to find the exact ones, they, yeah, you now have a link. But the, um, I'm not sure if I would really recommend them yet. I really enjoy them. I think they have been really good so far. They work really well in this sketchbook. So it's a technique that I'm really enjoying, but I've not had them for long. So I don't know how long they will last, how much paint is actually in them. So before I would say, oh yeah, I really recommend them or not so much. I. Uh, I would personally like to try them a little bit longer, but I know people are always curious about the materials that I use. So I uh, created a link and I added that to the um, description of um, today's class. I will add it to last week's as well, but I forgot to do it. But now I'm here and I remember, so I, uh, I decided to, uh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it later. I remembered I was supposed to do them. So. I'm also considering starting a new course. I know my floral course is in full swing. I can see everyone's updates sort of coming through. Every time someone completes a section, I get a little notification of that, which is really wonderful because I can sort of see if there's a part of the course where people sort of disconnect from, or if you know, sometimes you can see oh, everyone gets to 40% or 60% and then everyone stops. And then I can think, oh, maybe that video wasn't very good, or maybe there was something else that sort of stopped people from carrying on. So it's a good. So that's sort of the reason why um, we have these sections. But it's really lovely for me to know people are working on a course and to see people's uh, progress and just know that people are engaging with things that I've made. So it's um, yeah, it's really lovely for me to see my phone ping and then see all these messages come through people have completed different sections of the course. So that's in full swing at the moment. That course comes with another live session, which is next week. This week is a little bit quiet. Um, so that's, that is next week. And then I'm thinking of doing a new course. I was thinking of doing a course where um, we use paper cutting. So we paint our paper in different colors and then we cut it 
in little bits and pieces and then we use those cuttings to create our illustrations which is a really fun technique it's a little while since the last time i've done it but i think it creates really beautiful results and um it's quite like you don't need to be really good at drawing to join in which is really great as well and um yeah, the, the impact of all these colorful bits of pieces of paper is really great. So I'm sort of crystallizing, thinking about the next course already, which is a lovely state to be in. I always like having lots of ideas and working them out. I'm also still thinking about this realistic animal drawing course, um, which I'm filming at the moment, but that doesn't, it doesn't feel quite finished in my mind yet, the, the setup that I have. So sometimes things take a little bit longer. So there we go. Oh, hi Linda, lovely to see you as well. Always lovely to see everyone. There we go. So I'll make sure my sound is a bit closer. Um, I am really enjoying the fact that it's a bit more spring here. I've had lunch outside in the garden a few times this week. And I've been out and about. Yesterday I went to London to a few museums. It was raining. Um, well, I hope it's not raining too bad, but sometimes a rainy day is quite nice, isn't it? When you feel like you can cozy up inside. I'm very much a glass half full person. If it's sunny, I'm like, oh, it's sunny. I love it. I can go outside. And when it's raining, I'm like, well, it's raining. That means I can do something nice inside and cozy up and you know, not have to feel guilty. Because sometimes when it's really sunny, I feel a bit guilty if I don't make the most of it, if I stay inside. And the, um, yeah, then if it's rainy, I don't have to feel guilty for not making the most of the sun. So it's a quite good excuse to be inside and enjoy inside things. And I, I know I'm very fortunate and I, I have all this like, time that I can spend the way I want it and that I, um, you know, can go outside and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I really appreciate it as well. I am um, a volunteer once a week where I go see someone who's a bit older here in the town where I live in. And um, we hang out, have a cup of coffee together and just chat, just company. And that does make me realize how fortunate I am that I can go out and about and that I am, I have a healthy body. There we go. So I decided to do the background first before I start with the with the green. So there we go. Um, actually, I turned this around, didn't I? So we go this way because the green is at the bottom of the flower. So I'll carry on with this one. Yeah, so these are really quite tropical plants. So, so I really, what I really like about this type of marker is that the that the opacity of the paint is so that you can go over another color and then just cover it. So that means you can make adjustments and change things and it just gives a lot of freedom to be able to go over it. See, and add these colors. So I'm filming a little mini series, which I'm sharing on uh, my reels about all the different types of markers that are out there. So I have filmed watercolor markers and um, alcohol markers and acrylic paint markers now. Just to share with people what the differences are. Um, you miss your coffee this morning. Um, ah, 
oh yeah, I'd, I'd drink one cup of coffee a day. I get this. I, I um, drink one cup of coffee a day because I get migraines quite badly if I drink too much coffee. The uh, my coffee, the coffee drinking coffee triggers migraines for me. But if I drink one cup of coffee, it seems to be okay. And I really love the smell of coffee. There's just something about it that is really lovely, isn't it? But yeah, I'm not in the Netherlands. Everyone drinks so much coffee. Liters and liters, more than tea. But I uh, I stick with only one cup of coffee a day. But I drink nice coffee, so I make it at home. I have a really good espresso maker. I put effort into making it really nice. And um, then really enjoy it, even if it's just one cup. I want it to just really be lovely and, uh, and really enjoy it. So... There we go. I much rather have one really lovely cup of coffee than ten not so nice ones. So there we go. So see, we start to get a little bit of that shape. And let's add in a bit of this darker green as well. I don't know if we can really see it. Maybe the color contrast is not quite high enough. I should do really do a swatch of all these colors at some point. But then I need to also keep the swatch somewhere where I can use it. So I'm usually a little bit too lazy to swatch out to swatch out colors. Do you swatch your paints and your your markers? There we go. I am not sure how it is called. It's a tropical flower. I've seen it quite a few times. Should I see if it comes up if I scroll down? It's not a bird of paradise. It is an. This is the bird of paradise that has this. Um, see if you can see it. This one with the orange sort of stripes is bird of paradise. Um, they are called mm, a lobster claw, someone says here. This is a lobster claw. I trust this person who commented on the on the picture. So yeah, they are um, they are wonderful, aren't they? Sometimes you see them in flower shops. But rarely. So I don't, it's almost like the whole plant is a flower, isn't it? So adding in a bit extra red. I am, um, yeah, I love them. I think they're gorgeous. I think tropical flowers are so interesting. They're so, they have such unique shapes and they are so, um, yeah, different from like daisies or sunflowers or you know, the flowers that you sort of immediately think of when you think of a flower. So I'm adding in a slightly darker color. And there we go on the other side. Just need to decide if I'm going to add something to the background. I think the background is a little bit plain at the moment. Let's have a look. Um, I think I want some sort of color on the background, but I want it to be subtle. So I'm going to not use any of the colors I've used so far, but I have this pink. And maybe I can use a slightly darker pink to stick within these tones. And I am just, just let me quickly test that. Yeah, I like that. I'm just going to make a bit of a blob, so let's create a shape that is a little bit different from that light pink that we've had here. So, 
So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very much just doodling and coming up with ideas whilst I am drawing. This is a very low pressure um, environment for me, like the way of that I'm painting. I'm also used to watch to having people watch whilst I paint. I don't mind it if I make a mistake and one of my drawings becomes really messy or really ugly, if I dare say, say ugly. Um, that's okay. That's just part of the process, and I don't mind you seeing that. I think in when I first started, I was always a bit nervous to share my art sort of during the making process because it's quite it can go wrong, right? It can happen. But nowadays I am um, I don't mind it. So you get used to it. It's like hearing your own voice. I create so many recordings of myself because you know I have this podcast and I um I uh, record videos for my courses and I have to edit the videos. I have to listen to my own voice so much that uh, I don't mind it anymore. It's always really weird when you first hear your own voice on tape, but I do it so often that I'm really used to it. And I um, I was a bit insecure about my voice and my accent when I first started, but nowadays I'm really used to it. And also um, people seem to quite like my accent. so. It's what it is, right? I don't, uh, I don't feel insecure about it anymore. But yeah, all these little things you uh, learn. The more you do it, the easier it gets. As with everything, so I have my finger here on the paper to keep my paper flat, which is a bit against sort of good practice to touch your paper. And the reason that is so is because your fingers have oils in them like your skin has oils in them and your fingers also. And um, those oils can affect the paper and create stains. And if you paint on watercolor, for example, those fingerprints can really stand out. Uh, you can, yeah, so it can sort of not ruin your painting, but affect your painting. And also the oils in your finger can damage your painting in the long run if you create something you want to keep it like archival, don't touch it because the oil in your fingers can damage it. When I work in a little sketchbook like this, um, I don't think this sketchbook is going to survive the next 500 years. It might do. Who knows? I might become super. I might become super famous, and then suddenly, this little sketchbook is going to be in museums. Who knows? Well, if that is the case, they'll just have to find a way to deal with my fingerprints on there. Um, yeah. So I just touch my paper, and uh, but officially, you are not really supposed to. So, for the next one, shall I make a little sketch? Shall I be a bit controversial and make a sketch? I never really sketch in these, in these um, books. I think I might do. I'm just keeping the same reference picture because I like it. And I'm uh, going to sketch out the birds now instead of the flower. So let me zoom in a bit. I think I might make a little sketch just because birds are a little bit more intricate than these leaves that we did before. So I always have lots of tape stuck to my desk. There we go, so make sure you can see it also. I want my hair up. I am, um, my hair drives me crazy if it hangs in the way. So, there we go. I like it better sometimes down, but I hate it when it, uh, when it hangs on my paper and it's in the way. So, I, yeah, I'm going to make a little sketch. So I think I'm just going to do one of the birds here. And they have this really nice sort of fluid shape. So I'm just making sure you can see it. In case you are drawing along, I want you to be able to see what it is that I'm doing. So, so that if I want the sort of beak of the hummingbird here, then this is going to be its belly so see it has a really nice fluid shape until sort of here and then this is going to be its face so and then round so see that's sort of the main shape for the bird's body 
Good fluid, long. So, roughly there. A bit like a bean. So, like that. And let's add some wings. So that wing is sort of going here, a little bit rounded, and then up. All the way there. Roughly like this. I like that sort of motion, that curve, so I'm adding that in. So this is the main line, and then I'm adding a few feathers on that side as well to show that curve. So, and then the tail is sort of roughly here, straight, sort of roughly, maybe a little bit of a curve sort of in that direction. And then there. And actually there's a wing here at the front, isn't it? So let's at that, it's almost invisible. So, like that. This is going to be my bird. So this is my quick sketch. As you can see, I'm quite sort of determined with my lines. I sort of decided I want to fill the entire paper. This is not going to be a pattern. I'm going to just draw this bird out. like that. And I will sort of use a bit of blue and green here. So I think that looks really lovely. So, and some blue. And then maybe combine it with some pink again. So, there we go. Similar color scheme to here with a little bit more blue in there. So, and I want to use, so this is a slightly different type of drawing, isn't it? Than this sort of loose pattern. I want, but I still want to keep it very um, flat, if that makes sense. So there's no texture in this type of paint. Um, and by texture, um, well, I sort of assume everyone knows what texture means. But like, for example, if you have crayons, that has quite a clear texture. Watercolors has that texture where sometimes it is more smooth. Sometimes it is a bit more see-through. You have sort of clumps in the paint where the paint sort of comes together more. And you have more uh, places where the paint is sort of flowing out. So you have that sort of watercolor texture. This type, you can see a little bit of brush strokes here, more than with um, alcohol markers, which you can create really smooth lay downs, but it's a fairly flat medium, so I'm going to see if I can keep that. I'm not going to start using lots of texture in this picture. So I'm sort of going a little bit in teaching mode here, which is not really what I tend to do in these classes, but I can't help myself. So, so I'm going to almost use these shapes that I've created and just color block them out. So maybe a bit of green here. Maybe I can let that come back here. So, I like that for the beak as well, which is really thin. So, just one line. So. Sometimes to get complete opacity, you need to do multiple layers, right? So keep that in mind when you're working on your own picture. So we can see the lines of my sketch shine through a bit here, which I don't mind, but if I want that gum, that little line, I need to go over there a few more times. So you can see I'm sort of simplifying the shapes a little bit and I'm just making it up as I go. I've not prepared this drawing. I've never drawn this bird before. So I'm making it up as I go. But I try and do it in a way that sort of makes sense. So. There we go. I need to concentrate a little bit. Just quickly checking if anyone has any questions, but I think 
you are all deeply concentrated on your own your own pictures. So there we go, I like it. Mm, maybe this foot, this is a little paw, a little claw of the animal. I don't think I'm going to use that dark blue one here. I think I'm going to use this pink instead. So. The paper that I'm using here is not the best quality paper. I think I've told you that before, haven't I? So it's very thin, but you can see, if I show you, that my picture doesn't really come free. You can see a little bit of a hint of it, but this type of paint doesn't press through to the picture. If I, if I just show you, just for comparison, um, Let's do yeah, some red and some purple. So these are alcohol markers. If I, so let me do this at the back of the page. So if I would use that alcohol marker on this type of paper, I'm using the last page of the book to demonstrate this. Uh, make sure you can see it. So let's so say I add a line here. Even just one stripe. So here I go over it twice. A few more times. See there you go. It gives this, gives this really nice even application. Much less stripey than the paint I'm using now. I could make that into a really nice even, really lovely even um, like layer. Like for example, for portraits. Using alcohol markers is absolutely fabulous. Uh, so make it a bit darker. You can sort of see you can create really lovely gradients with it. But and here comes the but. If I go to the other side, it is almost as vivid as it is um, on the original side, and you can see it even presses through on this page quite a bit. So that's my alcohol markers. They, uh, they really press through the paper. If you compare that with these paint markers, that are definitely a bit more stripey, a bit less sort of polished, but they, um, they don't really come through at all. So that's sort of the main reason why I like using markers like this, these alcohol markers in this um, type of um, in this uh, yeah this on this type of paper so. and I don't want you to think that alcohol markers are not good I absolutely love using alcohol markers I think they it's such a lovely smooth application and um, they're really great for like, pet portraits and animal portraits um, for um, human portraits as well you can create really lovely even tones yeah so i think they are a really great medium but for this like thinner paper i would definitely recommend a different type of material whether that is pencil or pen or ink something that doesn't press through as much as the um, as the alcohol marker so. there we go i'm just sort of making this into a stylized bird as you can see based on that shape that we see in the uh, in the photo um, 
which markers do you mean, um, Linda? Because these markers I'm using here, they are acrylic paint markers. I added a link to the description of this video. But the markers that I just shared, these are Windsor Newton Pro markers. They are uh, alcohol based pro markers. You can buy pro markers that are water based as well, but these particular ones are alcohol based. So, and again, I don't think you need these. Should I add a little circle with a cup? I think I'm going to do it. So, I am using my water cup I don't know if I'm still alive, if I've been disconnected I think I'm still alive. Good. I was worried for a moment I got disconnected. Um, I, uh, I'm just going to use my painting cup and just create a little circle. So if we're making a bit of a design, there we go. So I can use that to create a shape here. Maybe one here. Um, so. we go. I draw um, quite a lot of free hands as well. Oh, the, the um, markers for the animal portraits are called alcohol markers. They, I use these a lot. I actually, I am I'm, uh, hosting a course. It's one of the courses I've got on my website, which is uh, create your own pet portraits and there I share the technique of using alcohol markers and then going over it with color pencil and it's a really great way of adding um, yeah you can create really realistic and vibrant portraits of animals that way so I sort of forgot about that for a moment I didn't mean to pluck my course but I am um, yeah it's one of the courses that I have There we go, just going around the edge. So. You can see how some colors are a little bit more opaque than others. And that is very natural. That is sort of the same for all art materials. Some color pencils are more opaque than others. Some paints are more opaque than others, and same, some markers are more opaque. And it has to do with the pigment. Some pigments are just more opaque than others. I can see if I can quickly find them. Um, there we go. Uh, So this is the box that I have, but it's quite a large box, so i share a slightly smaller one. Um, and where is the chat? There we go. So, this is the box of markers that I have, the, uh, this one. You can see, but yeah, they're uh, Windsor and Newton Pro markers. They are alcohol based markers. So, um, I am editing. 
adding a bit more here. Not sure if I'm 100% happy with this color scheme. I picked the colors first and I felt like I needed to add in a bit of a darker color. Oh, this is the wrong blue, isn't it? That's why. Um, I felt I needed to add in a slightly more intense color, which is why I added the blue. But I'm not sure if it's really the vibe I was going to go for, but it's okay. Um, you don't know if they're acrylic or not. Well, the it usually says so on the packaging, if they are. Um, a lot of markers are water-based markers. So if you have, if it doesn't say anything, they're probably water-based. If, um, if you've used them and you, um, like once they're completely dry, if you make them wet, if they uh, sort of activate with water, or if they react with water, then they're water-based markers. That's a good way to test. Um, I think also if it doesn't say anything on the pa packaging, it's probably water-based markers. So most felt tips are. Um, and it's worth trying some, like I have some felt tip pens that really press through the paper. And I have some that sort of lie a bit more on top, like the ones that I'm using here. They, um, so just give it a try and then see if you like them or not. That's always just the best way. If you like it, then it doesn't really matter so much what the material is. Um, yeah, so that's first and foremost, if you like it, well then great, keep using them. But if it doesn't say anything, I would assume they're water-based. So, as a lot of marker and art supplies are. Slowly carrying on. Um, hi Nicole, really lovely to see you as well. Hope you are keeping well. I think I might add a bit of orange to these circles and then I'm um, going to try add some orange. I feel like I want a separate color. I have pink and bluish. I don't want to use that green again. I can also keep it white, of course. I am. Um, I like a limited color palette, but I'm a bit of a maximalist, and I tend to add in more colors. I just love using color. I feel like this needs a bit of brightness. Now it looks a bit like a nighttime picture, doesn't it? I'm sure if we're quite sharp. Yeah, so at the moment it looks a bit like a nighttime picture, but I, if I make the the background a brighter color, it's going to feel a bit more um, daytime. I don't know if I want a yellow. I think that might be a bit too harsh. I can also add more pink. I don't want it to look like the pink is part of the part of the bird. That's why. Mm. I do want these lines here to be a bit more opaque, so let me do that first and then we'll decide. So, little hummingbird. So maybe I can use the light pink if the light pink doesn't touch the doesn't touch the um, the circles. I think that's quite a good idea. Let me do that. So I keep the scheme simple. I'm going against my instincts of adding lots of extra colors. I'm going to keep it simple. There we go. Over the edge. So. And then here as well.
the um I'm, I'm sort of doing some little series on art materials. Same with um with um how do you call it with crayons. There's so many different types of crayons. And sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming where to start and which ones to use. Um, yeah, and I think it's the same with markers. I think watercolor paint is a bit more straightforward. You, of course, you have watercolor paint and gouache, but they're sort of very different materials. I think a lot of people would understand what the um, difference is between gouache and watercolor once they uh, have tried them out. Or I think it's quite clear, but I think with markers they look so similar. Like the packaging is really similar. Same with the crayons. Like a lot of a lot of them look really similar. Like the packaging and then the results and the colors can be very different so yeah I remember when I first started I found it quite difficult to sort of know what art materials to start with and what effects to create with what and um, for a lot of things I didn't even know they existed this was all before internet of course because that is how old I am <laughs> growing up in a world without internet um, so yeah, unless your parents knew all these things, or you had friends who knew all these things, then um, yeah, how would you learn? So nowadays you can find anything on YouTube. You see all these beautiful things come by on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. All these places where you can find inspiration for art materials. It can be a bit overwhelming, but yeah, it, none of that existed. There was a quite a big art shop in the town, like because I grew up in Rotterdam, which is a really big city. Um, there was there was some decent sized art shops there, and I remember sort of going in there and I'm feeling really overwhelmed by all these art supplies. And also, I didn't really have any money, so to buy them was really expensive. So if you'd invest in something, it was a big investment. Um, well, I feel nowadays there's so much more affordable options available and also I have a bit more money than when I was 16. But yeah, I found it really hard at the time to uh, come up with what to do. Oh, well Margot, if they are water soluble, that um, gives you a whole new range of possibilities to use them for, which I think is really wonderful. Um, so I, I actually made this, this yesterday or the day before yesterday with water soluble. No, it looks a bit pale because my light is very bright. But yeah, you can make a drawing and add water to it and then change it into paint basically. And something that I really like to do is use my water soluble markers to add some color to the paper uh, in my sketchbook and then draw over it with other materials uh, once it's dry. So let's see if I have an example here. Not really any of my sketchbooks close. But yeah, and to create sort of the first layer, like a base layer of colors with my markers in a sort of quite a loose way and then use my pencils uh, or use my markers dry to uh, add a bit more detail. So it's, um, yeah, it's a really great material to, uh, to experiment with. Different from acrylic paint materials, of course, which you, um, you can't really add water to. I think I need a little bit more detail here. So, but well, have you heard of this um, this artist called Grandma Moses, who is um, American, and she started painting in her eighties, I think. So this is little feet. She started painting in her eighties, and she made so many really wonderful paintings and artworks. And um, she became quite famous and she made this a full-time occupation, but she was like in her 80s and 90s when she uh, when she started out. And uh, I think that's a really great example that it's never too late to start. Trying to create sort of a bit more of a stylized look in this messy little picture. So. Yeah, she made lovely paintings. Let's see if I can find her as well. we go. 
Oh, that doesn't work, does it? Um, yeah, here. She, she lived sort of in the 40s. Grandma Moses. Um, there we go. This is a Wikipedia page. Oh, see, in your 60s. I I think it's wonderful to start something a bit later. And like, come on, there's so many, like, oh, we all continue learning our entire lives, right? It's never too late to start. I think sometimes our society is so ageist where we think only young people can learn things or start something new or start a business. Or There's all these lists of the 30 people under 30 and stuff. No, maybe we should make a list of like the... 60 people over 60 who did something amazing. Yeah. Um, there we go. I'm not, I'm not over 60 yet, but um, I hope that once I am, I will still learn lots of things and start lots of new adventures. That's what I'm hoping for. I would say this is finished, I think. Hmm. Or am I? Maybe I can add in. Um, a little more detail. See, I keep changing my mind on things like this. So, oh, fantastic, Linda! I, I just think it's wonderful. And actually, in my classes, there's quite a lot of people who are a bit older, or a bit more mature. I don't know, depends on what words we like to use, but, um, and quite often suddenly people have time to make art, right, and to, sometimes life can be quite busy, and then people start making art, sort of once they retire, or when they have a bit more time like that, and, um, yeah, there's loads of people who do my classes who are in their 60s or 70s, loads and loads. There we go. Adding in some dots and some other things. Um, your struggle is to organize your art direction so they don't overwhelm me. Yeah, I recognize that as well. I love doing lots of different things. I am. Um, I have sort of accepted that that is how I roll. I like doing lots of different things and um, I have accepted that this is uh, what I like to do. I paint on large canvases, I illustrate for children's books, I illustrate for businesses, I run art courses, I like to paint, I like to draw, I like to work uh, digital as well, I use color pencils, I use paint markers and yes it's a bit chaotic sometimes and I'm sure if I had focused on one thing my business would be more successful in terms of money or it's easier to market but it's not my personality I love doing lots of different things and I have just decided that I that that's just the way it is I am um, I'm not fighting it Sometimes I find it for a short moment when I think, okay, I need to focus on creating something specific for a little while, and then I try and do that. But other than that, I just allow myself to learn as much as I can. Um, and I'm also very fortunate, of course, that I'm a full-time artist and I have an art studio and I can keep all the materials there and all these sort of things. Um, but yeah, sometimes I think, especially social media likes us to believe that we need to do one thing at a time and really focus. And not just social media, I think when you become a student as well, like we, we learn that we need to pick a specialism and we need to be specialized in something. Whilst in reality, um, we, um, we uh, I think a lot of people like to do more, more than one thing in their life. Um, do I invite people in my studio? I uh, do actually, because my studio is shared and it is not a public space, but anyone can walk in. Um, it is part of a membership studio where some people just have a desk. Some people um, 
just come in and hot desk and then some people have whole studios so it's um it's a bit of a public sort of space and it's in cambridge in the uk and if you want to visit you are very welcome just let me know send me an email and i'll be more than happy to uh, let you know where it is and uh, yeah absolutely i think I might not share the exact location sort of for the whole world to see on the internet because you never know. But yeah, if you send me a little email, you can find my email address on my website. And uh, I'll be more than happy to invite you for a cup of coffee. So, we have, um, there's about 30 artists there and we all have art studios. Some people, uh, not everyone's visual artists. There's a few people there who have uh, photography studios. There is uh, people there who are garden designers. There are some people there who uh, are architects as well. A few children's book illustrators. Um, I use that space for fine arts. I work on bigger canvases and on oil paint. And I'm exploring it more in that way. Um, there's people there writing. So it's a really, yeah, really, um, which is also why I feel quite safe to invite people because it's sort of a public space. and. Um, also, I'm sure you're all really lovely people, but yeah, it's um, it is definitely sort of an an open space for people to come in. It is absolutely a community of creative people, and also we are very much working. Uh, the studio space is called Together Culture, and we are working together to uh, um, make positive change in Cambridge as well in all sorts of different ways. So not just art studios, but other other things as well. Um, oh, lovely. I, sorry, I'm just reading the comments, which is just really lovely. The, uh, yeah, I know the feeling. I also, I am working on um, a children's book at the moment, which I have not finished. Like, I'm really very much sort of working on it in my head, as you say. Um, I'm already thinking about the next few courses that I want to teach. I'm uh, thinking about I don't know. Also, so many different things that I want to do. Things I want to learn. At some point, I'd really like to do an art retreat, sort of, you know, like getaway where people can sign up and we all go somewhere and make art together. But that's a bit of a future dream because I think, I don't think I really have the bandwidth to organize that at the moment. So, and also to make the financial um, sort of commitment to start doing that before the, um, yeah, like to plan it ahead and stuff. I think you need to uh, be able to uh, to say how many people are going to join beforehand and all that sort of things. So, there we go. I am, um, I was not always an artist, I think Oh, that's a good idea. A bit of ivory. Do I have this? I have... This is a bit of an, a light sort of pink tone. Slightly, was it? No, it's a different color than I used here, but I might have an, a little bit of a yellowish tone. I picked a bit of pink in the, eye, in the eye, but I think here's sort of... That is a bit of pink in there, but I think it might be a little bit too red, so maybe that. Could be a bit of ivory. I like to take suggestions. That is so. There we go. They. The reason I made that eye quite big is because they um, in the picture it's quite an. Um, it's quite a uh, large eye, a bit larger than I would normally make a bird eye, but... So, maybe a little bit of... Do I have some black? I definitely have some black pens here. But, oh, sorry, I'm bumping into... A bit of good old sharpie that might actually press through to the other side. So, what do we think of that? It 
sort of works, doesn't it? Yeah, so I'm really trying to stick with the color scheme, as you can tell. No, oh, of course I'm not offended. I love it. A bit of interactive creation. Plus, I can just ignore you if I want to, right? <laughs> um, so, what time is it? It's already four o'clock. See, I forgot the time. It happens when you're having fun. There we go. So I think I'm going to say it's finished then. The book starts to fill up really nicely. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I really like doing this one. It was really simple, but I think the result is really fun. And I'm sort of envisioning maybe creating some patterns out of these. Shame that I accidentally marked that. Yeah, as you can see, the other side is still white. So um, I'm having a lot of fun filling this sketchbook. I think it's at least 60 pages though, so uh, a lot to go. There we go. Our pictures for today. It's made lovely fabric, yeah. I have done I have done a few fabric designs. Um here yeah, I quickly show you. Um I think if I go to my yeah, I've done some fabric designs before for dog harnesses and for some children's clothes and for uh, yeah, some patterns for some other things. But it's not... Not something that I, uh, I do very often. I'm not a like, pattern designer per se. Yeah, if you're curious about my studio and stuff. You can find it here. So, um, you need a sea turtle. I, sorry, I'm not sure. Oh, a seahorse? I'm not quite sure what you mean. I'd love to have a seahorse. Um, I'm not sure if that means something else. <laughs> to wrap up because I need to start working on my next project. So thank you so much for joining in. I really love having you here as always. Um, these sessions run every Thursday at the same time and um, sometimes I have to cancel it but I try to uh, to carry on. Oh I need to draw a seahorse. Yeah that's a good idea. I have drawn some seahorses before. I thought you meant in terms of pattern design. I thought maybe seahorse is a company or something. I uh, I misunderstood. I should definitely add some seahorses to uh, to the sketchbook. I think it's a good idea. I love seahorses. Well, I really hope you feel inspired and I can see some people are, which is wonderful. I um, hopefully see you next week. I sent out an email to everyone on... Um, some people sign up to this over Eventbrite. I sent out an email for a free trial of my community. Um, yeah, so if you're curious about that, let me know. I can send you the link if you've not received it. Two other things. Well, let me know. Let me know what the other things are and then I'm going to, to leave you. Now I'm curious. Well, you might have already left. That's again. I will find out next time. Well, I hope you have all a really lovely time and I'll see you soon for our next session. Bye bye.